I can make you a chess pro. And I know, you might be wondering, what does this little chess nerd know anything about being a chess pro? Well, Anto Boy might not know anything about being a chess pro, but I do. I will be giving you eight tips that you can follow to become a chess pro. Beep boop bop. Before this video starts, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and watch all the way until the end of the video to make sure that you get every single last tip. Beep boop bop. Now, let's get straight into it. Woohoo! Starting at the beginning, the first thing that you need to focus on when becoming a better chess player is your opening theory and opening principles. In general, your opening should achieve three main goals. Getting central pawns in the center of the board, preferably your D and your E pawn. Developing your pieces like your knights and your bishops out. And eventually getting your king to safety by either castling short or castling long. Take a look at a specific opening that encapsulates all of these ideas in one. We're going to be looking at the Queen's Gambit. The Queen's Gambit starts with d4 and the opponent playing d5. You will then go c4. Now, you might be a bit confusing on why you're not fighting for the center with your e pawn on e4, but that is because they can very easily take. Now, if they play the Queen's Gambit accepted, they will take this pawn and you will now have two pawns in the center. This is a very common position that'll occur in the Queen's Gambit. Now you have your pawns attacking four very important squares on the opponent's side of the board. And after the opponent makes a move like e5, opening principles would tell you to develop a piece like a knight to a square like f3. The opponent would do the same, moving their knight up to f6. And what you can do now is you can take the c pawn with your bishop, not only winning material, but also developing your bishop onto c4 now having a very active bishop looking all over the board. And now eventually you're going to be able to castle your king, getting your king to safety, and now you're going to be able to develop the rest of your pieces, moving out your bishop to a more active square, developing your knight to a square like c3, that way it can attack even more squares on the board, and then eventually making your rooks more active, moving it to an open file, advancing your pawns, and now out of the opening, you have a plan for the rest of your game, and you are set up in a very solid position. Now let's take a look at Chad GBT's response. Opening principles, beep boop. Emphasize control of the board center, rapid development of your pieces, and king safety through early castling. These steps are crucial for a strong start, setting a solid foundation for the rest of your game. Beep boop bop. The second tip that I'm going to give you today that you should implement into your games to become better at the game is to learn and recognize common tactical patterns. Common tactics are just awesome. They're really fun to play once you see them because sometimes they can uh, give you a brilliant move icon which is just super nice and super satisfying to see. In this position, I'm going to show you a common tactical pattern which would lead to checkmate. But there are more tactical patterns than just this. There are forks, skewers, pins, revealed checks, attractions, deflections, so many that I can't even count. But the idea is to just learn these patterns, familiarize yourselves with them, and be able to spot these opportunities in-game. But in a position like this, for example, it's checkmate in six. White is just straight out winning. If you find the right move here, which is rook g7 check, that would just be really nice. Because as you can see, it's a check on the king, but the rook is also defended by the bishop. So now the king has to move to h8. And if you've seen this checkmate pattern before, it's a pretty common occurrence. It's basically just a bunch of revealed checks, which a revealed check is another common tactic but that's very powerful. But basically, you'll move your rook out of the way, taking a piece, like taking the pawn on f7. And now it's just a check on the king. The next move, the king is forced to move back because it's literally the only possible square. So now you're going to give another check again. Now the king again is forced to move to h8. And now it doesn't really matter what square you move to with your rook as long as you're just staying on the g-file locking in the king all the way down. So now when you move down to a square like g3, the king is no longer able to run to g8 because of the rook. And it's in check. So basically now, the only option that the opponent has is to just block the checks until it's checkmate. They're going to have to go queen to e5, you take with the bishop, and then rook 
to f6, and you take with the bishop again. And that is checkmate. Now let's take a look at ChatGBT's response. Tactical patterns, bop, bop, beep, enhance your tactical vision by familiarizing yourself with essential tactics like bins, skewers, forks, and discovered attacks. Regular practice with chess puzzles can significantly improve your ability to spot these opportunities in your games. Beep, beep, bop, bop, boop. The third tip given by ChatGPT to improve your chess skill is to learn and understand common endgames. The main ideas in endgames is how and when you should push your pawns. One of the most common scenarios at the end of a chess game is when you only have one pawn and your opponent only is left with their king and obviously you still have your king. The main principle in this position is to create opposition, which is where the opponent king and your king are staring right in front of each other with the pawn behind the king. You need to make sure that it is black's move now, because if it is white moves, then the idea won't work. So if black moves, for example, to f5, you want to create opposition by moving opposite of the king. So since the king moved to the right, you want to move your king to the left. And now your pawn is free to push up three squares. And now if the king moves back to in front of the pawn, you just do the same thing. Move your king in front. The king now moves all the way up. Then you'll just move your king up, creating more protected squares for your pawn that the opponent king cannot take. So now pretty much regardless of whatever the enemy king does, you'll be able to push your pawn over and over. The king moves here. You'll move back, creating opposition once again. The king moves to the side. You move up. King moves, move your pawn, king has to move here, and now promotion is unstoppable. And now promotion is unstoppable, and you are up a full queen, and you're going to go on to win this game. Now there's one other common principle that occurs in chess endgames, and that is the pawn squared. The squared pawn rule says that if you create a square with your pawn to the promotion side of the board, and the king is not in the square, then you are free to push your pawn, and the king is not going to be able to stop it. But, if the opponent's king is in the square, then it will be able to be stopped, as shown here. But if we go back to the original position, where the king is outside of the square, you are free to push your pawn, and the king will just not be able to catch up to the pawn. You will promote to a queen, and you are definitely going to go on to win this game. Now let's take a look at ChatGPT's response to proper endgame principles. Endgame knowledge, beep beep boop bop. Master basic endgames, focusing on principles that govern pawn endgames and key matchmaking techniques. Understanding these can often be the difference between drawing and winning a seemingly equal game. Beep bop bop boop. Fourth tip that ChatGPT gave to improve your chess skill is to understand positional gameplay. Positional gameplay is often a much slower and a much more complicated way to play the game, but if you can become very solid positionally, you are going to be unstoppable. Two very common types of positions are closed positions and open positions. The position shown on the board right now is currently an open position. The main classification is that the board is, well, pretty open. There's not, mer there's not very many pawns staring at each other, locking up the position. And pieces like bishops in open positions are very powerful. Specifically, my bishop on g2. This is called a fianchetto, and my bishop is staring all the way down this diagonal, looking at this pawn and x-raying through that pawn onto the rook. So speaking positionally, this bishop is a super strong piece. Also looking at another strong piece for white is the rook on e1. The reason why this rook is so strong positionally is because it is placed on an open file. An open file just means that there are no pawns blocking the sight of the rook. The rook is looking all the way up the e-file, looking at the bishop and the knight behind it. Currently, the bishop is actually hanging for black, so they're going to have to respond to the threat by the rook somehow. Generally speaking, in open positions, bishops are more powerful and more beneficial than knights, 
because they stare all the way through the board. However, in a closed position where there are a lot of pawns locking up the position, bishops are not as powerful. So knights are actually preferred because they can jump over the pawns and effectively create pawn breaks and develop the game even further. If you can learn how to play positional games effectively and fully understand how they work, you are going to become an awesome chess player. Now let's see what ChatGPT has to say about positional play. Positional understanding. Beep, bop, bop, boop. Develop a deeper understanding of positional play, including the significance of controlling key squares, improving the activity of your pieces, and managing pawn structures effectively. Bop, bop, boop. The sixth tip that ChatGPT suggested in order to master chess is to understand pawn structures. Pawn structures are a very difficult concept to fully master because of how confusing they can be to a new player. There's no exact set rule for what makes a strong or a weak pawn structure, but I'm just going to give you some general ideas of how they work. In my opinion, there's three keys to how pawn structures are either determined to be strong or weak. A. Having a long and a strong pawn chain. B. Having doubled pawns and C, having isolated pawns. Having a strong pawn chain is generally seen as a positive and having doubled and isolated pawns is generally seen as a negative. In this position, white has a pretty strong pawn chain. However, black has some strategies that they can do to weaken white's pawns. The first very obvious one is to trade the dark square bishops. Black takes the white bishop on C3. Now the opponent is gonna have to take back with the pawn. This exchange is very good for black. Not only does it double the pawns on the C file, but it also leaves an isolated pawn on A2. This pawn is going to be a weakness for white in the future as they transition from the middle game into the end game. And these double pawns are going to be very inconvenient for white because they're not going to be able to push them as effectively and it's just going to be, create another weakness for, for white. However, white does still have one thing going for them in this position, and that is their big pawn chain. It gives them a lot of space controls a lot of squares that the pawns attack, and it's just overall very beneficial for white. Black does have a move that could potentially rupture this pawn chain and create a weakness, and that is pawn to d3. This idea would break white's pawn chain. After white takes, and black takes back, the pawn chain is broken, and there's an isolated pawn on f5. This pawn is going to be a weakness for white because it's overextended and it's going to be very hard to defend as pieces come out of black side to attack the pawn. Like, for example, potentially knight to h6, potentially a move like queen to f6, and overall, it's going to be very difficult for white to effectively defend this piece. Now let's take a look at ChatGPT's take on pawn structures. Pawn structures, bop, bop, boop, beep. Understanding the intricacies of pawn structures is crucial for both tactical and strategic play. Pawns are the soul of chess, as they shape the battlefield and create weak or strong squares. Learn the different types of pawn structures, e.g. isolated double pass pawns, and how they influence the game, including when to open or close lines and how to create or exploit weaknesses. Bop, bop, boop, beep, bop. Another tip given by ChatGPT to improve your chess gameplay is to use the check, capture, and attack checklist. This is a mental checklist that you should use before you make every move on the board in order to ensure that you have found the best move possible. The checklist has three main parts, check, capture, and attack. The first part of the checklist that you want to look for is the check. Look for all possible checks. In this position, there are two viable checks. Bishop to h3, and queen to f5. Let's look at the bishop first. The bishop has a check on the king, but nothing else really comes out of it. So that's kind of just a waste of a move. Queen to f5 is a decent move. It attacks the king and forks the pawn also. But let's see if we can find a better one. Next, captures. There aren't really any possible captures on the board other than queen takes the, the knight. But clearly that's not a good move because it's just going to get taken back by the pawn. So capture does not have a viable move. Let's now look at the very last part of the checklist. Attack. The first attack that I see that seems pretty obvious is pawn up to e5. This pawn move threatens the horse. But what it also does is it creates a revealed attack on the queen by 
the bishop. By following this checklist, we are now able to win a full knight, as well as in the future, now having possibilities of moves like queen to f5, because now the knight will no longer be defending the pawn on h7. This checklist is just a very beneficial tool that can help you find the best move possible when you have no idea where to look. Now let's see what ChatGPT has to say about the check capture attack checklist. The check capture attack checklist in chess is a quick decision making framework used during a game to identify immediate tactical opportunities and threats. It involves evaluating potential moves in a specific order. Check. First consider moves that put the opponent's king in check. This can force the opponent into a defensive position and may lead to a direct attack on the king. Capture. Next, look for opportunities to capture enemy pieces, especially if such captures can improve your position or result in a material advantage. Attack. Finally, identify moves that create threats against the opponent's pieces or position, such as attacking undefended pieces, threatening a fork, pin, or skewer, or building up pressure on a particular area of the board. This simple yet effective checklist helps players prioritize their actions, focusing on immediate tactical shots that can impact the game's outcome. Bop, bop, beep, boop, boop, bop, beep. Study Grandmaster Games. Bop, bop, boop, beep. Review Grandmaster Games to absorb high-level strategies and moves, particularly in your favorite openings. This practice sharpens your understanding of game phases and tactics. Bop, boop, beep. Hey guys, it's the boy here, back with another chess YouTube video. And in this video today, I am going to be showing you one of the most brilliant games ever played in the game of chess. Played by Cagnus Marlson and Caviano Marwana, two of the best chess players to ever do it. In this video, we're going to be looking over their games, analyzing their tactics, and studying their brilliant moves so that we can implement them into our own games. Anthony, tell me you're not making another stupid YouTube video. Dad, you need to stop, okay? You just don't believe in me. You need to have faith in your son that he can accomplish and that he can prevail in any endeavor that he takes on. I'm able to succeed in this journey if I truly believe and have faith in myself. You just need to stop rooting against me and actually believe that your son can do whatever he puts his mind to. Shut up, get over here. Ow, 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 stop, ow, dad, ow.